Hi everyone, welcome to Token Topics. I have an exciting XDC video in store. We just had a historic day. The Electronic Trade Documents Act has been passed. So we're going to look into that. Also check out how Zinfin is in the Philippines. That's pretty cool. We're going to go over a special document that you're not going to want to miss. And also I want to show you how there is great news about G20 discussing crypto for world adoption. Yeah, that's big. I am not paid for or sponsored by Zinfin or the XDC network. Let's dive in. All right, Decent family. I have a special Decent wallet announcement. This is exciting. And time will be integrating with WePin, our brand new built-in Web3 wallet. WePin offers easy and secure onboarding with social login and self-custody features. Stay tuned for our exciting collaboration with Antime. It's a truly exciting moment in history in the digital asset space. This is posted from the International Chamber of Commerce, and we're going to hear some words from Chris Southworth here in a moment. So today, the UK Electronic Trade Documents Act takes effect. How awesome is that? Making a historic lead towards paperless trade transactions. This act paves the way for the legal recognition of trade documents such as bills of lading and bills of exchange in electronic form. Now, with over half of the G7 nations already on board with more G20 nations exploring similar initiatives, we're ex accelerating our efforts to make global trade more efficient, sustainable, and inclusive. And I also want to go over something about the G20 that's very exciting for a blockchain network such as the XCC network. So continuing here, so our ICC DSI team has played a pivotal role in making this happen. And if you'd like to learn more, I'll put that link in, uh, down in the description. And this is also the ICC website, which you can check out yourself. It's been an exciting day indeed. We're going to hear words from Chris Southworth, who's Secretary General of ICC United Kingdom. He's been heavily involved with getting the ETDA passed into law. Let's remind ourselves that the law promises to revolutionize international trade by allowing the legal recognition of digital documentation. And if somebody is anybody who's listening, if they're discouraged, the price of XCC didn't go up. Remember, crawl, walk, run. This stuff has to be uh, put in order in order to use the digital assets. So just patience. If, you know, I'm, I'm excited because if we didn't cross this bridge, we wouldn't get to the next bridge. It's as simple as that. So in less than a month, Chris will be speaking about the impact of the ETDA at a trade finance investor day. The TFDI's annual event is taking place at the Grove Golf and Country Club just outside of London on 19th and 20th of October, if anybody's interested to go there. So let's go ahead and hear some words from Chris. Absolutely perfectly timed because the legal environment will be there and it's now really about exploring the opportunity, which is really, really exciting. We can do things for the first time, uh, really, from that event onwards and it's about getting us together and and using that intellectual capacity to really think this through and explore some of those opportunities it's very very exciting check out how awesome this is lloyd's bank was early to the party lloyd's bank has completed what it believes to be the first transaction under uk's new electronic trade documents act which came into force today the 20th of september so the ETDA gives electronic bills of exchange, bills of lading, and other commercial documents the same legal footing as paper documents. Now, Managing Director of Lending and Working Capital Lloyds Bank said that this new legislation is a turning point for a cheaper, faster, and more sustainable global trading system. We spent many years working with industry, government, suppliers, and clients to find ways to support the transition to digitization and we are pleased to be spearheading the practical implementation of the act. So Lloyd's Bank is connect, has a connection under these different initiatives. Very important discussions are on the horizon. G20 Finance Track will take up cryptocurrency MDB reforms next. So what does that mean? Finance ministers and central bank governors of G20 nations will gather in Marrakesh in October to discuss potential reforms and multilateral development banks. So that's what MDBs are. Multilateral development banks are also going to discuss on regulations for crypto assets, very important, and a global economic outlook. That's huge. The G20 aims to strengthen MDBs by widening discussion to include perspectives from the global south 
establishing a globally coordinated policy for crypto assets and promoting financial inclusion through the digital infrastructure. Finance ministers and central bank governors of G20 nations will meet in Marrakesh in October to deliberate over possible reforms and multilateral development banks, crypto asset regulations, and a global economic outlook. Economic Affairs Secretary A.J. Seth told Banikanekar in an interview edited expert. All right, I want to go over this gem of a document. Advancing the Digital Asset Era Together, an industry paper from the DTCC, Clearstream, and Euroclear. This is huge, especially with them combined. So, a shared commitment to shaping the digital asset era. We believe that DLTT, DLT and digital assets are beginning to deliver transformational benefits to market participants in every step of the trade life cycle. Given the current momentum and levels of adoption, we also believe that DLT is here for the long run. Yet as an industry, we face a challenge in realizing these benefits at a large scale. So that's big right there. They mentioned that digital assets and that DLT is here for the long run and that they realize this. So the individual and private explorations of DLT's potential now need to become an industry-wide effort to consolidate and connect digital liquidity based on common standards and processes. Optimize the TCC, Clearstream, and Euroclear commit to being at the forefront of this discussion. We are neutral, trusted, and resilient partners to the industry, and we have a unique role to play in unlocking the value of digital assets. Wow, that's nice right there. Uh, for the benefit of markets and underlying investors. Unlocking the next wave of market value. Huge. So while we remain in early stages of DOT evolution, there is little doubt that DOT and digital assets have now passed their uh, foundational stage in several areas. Based on the value exchange's research, more than $1.3 billion U.S. dollars of debt has been issued so far, and live digital bonds and over 160,000 digital equities are being transacted daily. That is very exciting right there. So in, in uh, securities, finance, and more, and in 15 of the world's leading banks, are working together to reduce lending and borrowing costs by over a hundred million dollars per year. Digital repo volumes exceed 50 billion in daily turnover. These volumes may be small in global terms, but they are uh, indicative of an increase in momentum of DLT and digital assets across the industry. And these projects have begun to deliver real and measurable benefits. In addition to the overall Automation of the issuance process, DLT and smart contracts are limiting days from bond issuance cycles. That is that is exactly what they are aiming for, too, so that is exciting. Uh, increasing the speed of the funding for issuers, reducing pricing, and creating new businesses opportunities, particularly in the structured product space. Elsewhere, fractionalization is making financial securities more accessible and increasing financial inclusion Across the post-trade life cycle, instant collateral transactions and intraday repos are transforming balance sheets and a need for ex extensive reconciliations across the trade cycle is being eliminated. That is big right there. Building on real-time golden copy ledgers and industry and development smart contracts and drive advanced automation from the front to the back office. The list goes on. As DOT continues to drive the fundamental shift from sequential to synchronous processing across the trade life cycle, firms are increasingly seeing a positive net cost impact emerge against potentially increasing treasury. This is from Lord Holmes. The Electronic Trade Documents Act comes into force. What next? It says He states that I have described it as one of the most important laws you've never heard of because although it is a small sounding law with a simple purpose to allow the digitization of trade documents, it is nonetheless one of the potential to have a colossal impact, not just on international trade, but significantly positively on our environment. Estimates from the World Economic Forum suggest moves to electronic trade documents could reduce carbon emissions from logistics by as much as 10 to 12%. I was fortunate to be on the special public committee, he states, from the draft uh, legislation. As it progressed through Parliament, we scrutinized every comma and full stop and had over three weeks of in-depth evidence sessions, cross-examining witnesses, legal experts, technologists, 
and representatives from every part of the trading ecosystem to ensure the bill was as precise as possible. It states here that English law governs 80% of the trade documents worldwide, so there is a serious amount of attention on a way that we are approaching this, and I think that we've done it well. So far, it seems smooth. So right here, I want to go over this part. He states that I have long interest I have a long interest in distributed ledger technology, also known as blockchain, publishing a paper in 2017 that urged that the government to do more to ensure benefits could uh, be harnessed for public good. This new law is an excellent example of exactly what I was calling for, a government-led initiative that will transform international trade for all our advantage and uh, demonstrate a criteria-based approach to legislating new technology. A blockchain bill, albeit one that doesn't mention blockchain. I want to jump over here. The Electronic Trade Document Act is based on a model law and electronic transfer records from a leader passed in 2017 by the UN International Trade Group. This model provides a framework that governments then need to align with their national legal systems. Although many countries have accepted the principle, including the G7, Few have yet to incorporate the law. Germany is expected to have full um, legislation later this year. In France, by 2025, probably 2024. China and the U.S. are on similar time frame. Singapore is one country that has already passed legislation, and we are the first G7 country to do so. States that our Electronic Trade Documents Act could become model law for how to adopt the UNCITRAL model law well that's all i have for the video thank you everyone for watching another edition of token topics take care